Welcome to Where We Learn, and in this video we're going to have a look at how we can create some pretty content for free. Let's start off with my setup. It's a PC. On it I have installed Windows 10, and within Windows 10 if I do a search and I search for the video editor, I end up with a tool that allows me to edit videos that comes with Windows. For putting the content together, I personally use Microsoft PowerPoint. However, because we have to be able to show we can do this for free, there is a free version of Office, or the equivalent thereof, called OpenOffice from Apache, and their PowerPoint is called Impressed, but it doesn't come with a video export tool. For this, we have to install an OpenOffice extension called the Impressed Video Converter. Next things next, we wanna have a look at the fonts of the style of writing. We're going to use commercially free fonts, personally recommend this website and we're going to use the good times regular font for beautiful images there are many many websites but I am a huge fan of Pixabay go on to Pixabay search for the images that you want to include and you'll see the sample ones here now included in the videos in a second if we want to add music sound effects there are tons of free commercial to use sounds video library and the YouTube one is amazing for being able to pick up some great backing tracks for your videos. So downloading the different bits, we end up with these. We start off with the OpenOffice installer. We also can see in the folder there, the impressed to video extension. And we also see flames.mp3 from the YouTube sound and three images we've downloaded from Pixabay. The Good Times regular font is available there as the TDF. So let's get stuck in. Okay, so here's my desktop. I have all the different items just in a folder on my desktop and all the various bits like Office, the extension and the font are pre-installed on my machine. I just install them by double clicking them and follow them through. They're now available for me to be able to use. So we open up OpenOffice and we start to use the Impress tool, which is for building presentations. So I'll drag this in from my other desktop. So let's build ourselves a presentation. This presentation ex acts exactly the same as PowerPoint. A couple of questions to get us started. I'm going to choose the black and white template just to provide some background and some context. We click next. The next it says, what are the transitions and the timing to move from slide one to slide two? We're going to leave it at the default to 10 seconds each. And we can put a fade or a wipe or some sort of transition effect so that when it moves from slide one to slide two, it looks pretty. Next bit's next, we're going to hit create. And it's now created us a very PowerPoint familiar, if you're used to PowerPoint. I can type onto the screen and I can also set the font. We're going to use that Good Times regular font we downloaded from the public website. From that, we're going to add in a couple of new slides. Each of the slides we're going to drop in, we're going to be putting into it a blank slide. And on those blank slides, we're going to be adding in the three images that we downloaded before from Pixabay. So add in the three blank slides, and because we're able to drag the window around, save ourselves a little bit of time, we're going to just literally drag and drop. So into the folder, pick up the image, hold down the mouse, and then drop it onto the slide. We repeat the exercise for the three different images, but you'll notice that when they drop in, they don't use up all of the screen. So we go back to the slide, reposition them layout. And in this way, you can add text on top of the screen. You can take a picture from anywhere. Just be careful where you take the images from. We want to respect copyright. So make sure you have permission to use the images. That's why we use websites like Pixabay, which give us permissions. Now that we have our PowerPoint set up, we have an option now called export as video. This is due to the extension we installed. So choosing export as video, we output a file name. There's a little tweak in this extension. Don't use spaces or strange characters, just call it a very simple name. In this case, we're gonna call it demonstration video one. And I'm gonna put it back into the all together folder. So that keeps all of our stuff nice and tidy. Remember, no spaces, no dashes, no dots. Just keep it all as numbers and letters, and it should work absolutely fine. It's going to create us an AVI. It also turns around and says, what's the slide difference between the different sections? We put in 10 seconds to match what we had at the start. We hit exp execute and give it a couple of seconds. And hey, presto, we now have a video. Now, you probably didn't notice, but just above the window, you'll now see our new AVI instantly available for us to be able to do some work with. Next up, we pull in the video editor from Microsoft. Now we're going to edit this video and play around with it a bit. 
So we start off, drop down our video editor and start a new video project. Give it a name, call it whatever you like. In this case, demonstration video one. With that created, we now get to drag in whatever materials we want to use. So very handily, we have an AVI we just created. So drag that in. In the top left, these are all the different materials you can use, but they're not in a sequence yet. So adding things like a background music and so on, you can choose some of the default Microsoft ones, but we want to use our custom music that we had. So at the bottom, you'll notice there's a storyboard. So we drag our video into our storyboard and you'll notice now that custom audio is available. Inside custom audio, we can now drag in that free MP3, commercially free to use from the YouTube guys. We're able to drop that onto the video. We now have video and music. And here's an example of it being able to work. It's already built for us. So we've done the impress presentation. We've added sound on top of it. And next we're ready to be able to create a finished video to upload to YouTube. In this case, we want an MP4. Choose the default options. And as you can see here, it says, I'm ready to save an MP4. Great. We'll go back to our desktop. We're going to choose our folder um, all together. So that way we just keep things nice and tidy. It's all in one place. We keep it as demonstration video one and we export the video. Your computer will take different amounts of time to be able to create or render this video, but the process is generally fairly quick. Go off, make a nice cup of tea or a mug of coffee and come back to be able to see your finished work. It only takes a couple of seconds. That's it, job done. And we now have our MP4 with the music in the background. For this training video, I've disabled the music so it doesn't play over me as I'm trying to talk to you. So with all of that, we now have a perfect MP4 with our music and our beautiful images and whatever we wanted to put in it. Now it's time to put it live. In this training video, we already have a YouTube channel set up. It only takes a couple of seconds. You go through the verification, get it set up. But you'll notice the icon with a little picture of a movie camera and a plus in it. And this allows us to upload a video. Very simply, we drag and drop. It transfers the video from our machine up to the YouTube servers. Now we can do a little bit of tidy up and adding extra information to the video to make it easier to find. This technically is using what's called open graph for being able to share this video on social media and to be able to share it around the world. We're able to put tags in it as well. When you use a comma at the end of the words, it causes it to uh, selectify or put these tags in on the video. We click publish, job done. Bouncing back to YouTube Studio Beta, we can see our video here. So going into demonstration video one, the bit that we're really interested in is the link. So this is the code that uniquely identifies our video. By being able to pick up this link and copy it, we can transfer that code into where we learn and it will allow it to become instantly a material which we can use throughout the Where We Learn platform. In this way, I've demonstrated that with free tools, with commercially free available materials, you can create beautiful materials with beautiful sound. It's down to your creativity. I really look forward to seeing what you come up with and learning from you. This was just a simple example and I know you can do a lot better. Please respect copyright and only use commercially free to use materials. I've prepared a key ring with all the websites mentioned in this video. The link is available under this YouTube video or as one of the last materials in this lesson. There are loads more videos to explore and tools for us to use. So please explore and enjoy learning with Where We Learn.